<laughs> Good evening. I'm Right Blend, as you're knowing by now. Uh, formerly Patriot Smoothie is knowing a real word. I think it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a real, real word, but awkward way of saying it. Uh, formerly Patriot Smoothie here to deliver you my report, my recap on day four. Sorry, yes, day four of the trial of Pat King. It is thankfully Friday here in Ottawa. The weekend of uh, the, the May 2-4 long weekend, Victoria Day long weekend on Monday. So we'll be back on Tuesday. Today we mostly watched videos. There was a couple of interesting arguments, some of which we can't talk about because there's a reporting restriction on some of it, but that's okay. We'll get to that bridge when we get to it and we'll cross over it and we'll throw rocks at the troll down below. Who knows? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> but thank you again for watching. And if you want to support my coverage, you appreciate these summaries, feel free to send me an e-transfer at real right brand uh, real right blend at gmail.com that is real as in the real you know I'm, I'm real i'm here i'm in existence real right blend right blend at gmail.com that's real right blend at gmail.com thank you very much if you want to send anything over if you don't well you know why well, like the video share the video comment on the video if you don't like the video tell me why maybe we'll argue because that could be fun so today, uh, again, we continued with the witness from the Ottawa Police Service, the crime analyst supervisor at the time, crime intelligence analyst supervisor at the time, just a crime intelligence analyst. More or less, I take it as uh, the role as somebody who watches videos of crimes or uh, goes online or, or basically just collects evidence of crime and analyzes it. I mean, it's kind of in the title, crime intelligence analyst, and I think a lot of it focuses on online. I'm not sure, but... So she was the officer who downloaded a lot of Pat King's videos, or she had a direct knowledge of the people who did, and she was involved in investigating, uh, chronicling, uh, keeping them into storage and documenting them, how many views they had, how many reactions, how many comments, how many shares. That's The Crown is asking basically after how many videos, you know, after each video is played, how many, is the transcript accurate as you were following along to it in Miss... Uh, Yaroskovich, I believe her name is Miss Allison Yaroskovich. I believe that's the name. I mean, you check my log. She is the fifth witness in the trial and the first one who did not appear at the trial of Tamara and Chris. So I apologize if I get that wrong, Miss Yaroskovich. And uh, we still, Miss Natalie Hano from OC Transpo will be coming back, I believe, next Wednesday. So, yes, after each video, the Crown would ask Officer uh, Yaroskovich. Uh, Yaroskovich, did you watch the video? Yes. Was it accurate to the transcript as you were following along? Yes. Um, how many views did it have at the time? This many. How many reactions, likes, dislikes, uh, sorry, likes, loves, hates, uh, whatever is on Facebook, the little emojis and stuff, all that. How many shares, how many comments? She earlier described what a share is, what a comment is, what a reaction is. And we went over some of that yesterday. So today the videos we watched were Pat King walking around, people coming up to Pat King, telling him how much they appreciate him standing up, how much they've been following him. Uh, a lot of Pat King walking around, talking about different things. Again, guys, it's kind of a bit of a blur because when you're sitting there watching lots and lots of videos, it kind of all blends together. And I'm, I'm thinking about moments that stick out to me majorly. And again, when I'm transcribing the court proceedings, it kind of also creates a blur there because instead of being able to focus on key points and takeaways, I have to focus on the entire picture. So that clogs up my small brain and <laughs> makes things more difficult for me when I have to come here and talk to you about it. So I sit here and I'm like, what is what happened today? And we're trying to get through it. And that's why I'm buying myself some time right now. <laughs> so yes, the, the video... Uh, there was uh, some discussion later in the afternoon that I cannot discuss because there's a reporting restriction, but there were some very interesting things said in it. Too bad I, we can't talk about it. I mean, everything is interesting in the entire proceeding, but uh, always interesting things said, and sorry, some, some of it we can't talk about it. Maybe later. But uh, I feel overall the day went pretty well for Mr. King, the defense. I think it did. Uh, there was a point where, I'll, I'll give you an example. We were watching a particularly long video, and this was a video, I believe, from January 10th. I might be getting it wrong. And it's a video of Pat King in his room talking about the logistics of Convoy, how there's going to be an agreement to sign, uh, how there's going to be a compensation form and, and be peaceful and lawful. And it just went on and on and on. And I don't know if there was a technical difficulty and uh, or whatever happened, but at, for some reason, 30 something minutes in or 20 something minutes in, it stopped. And then the judge took the opportunity or maybe he caused the pause. I don't know, caused the pause. And he said to the crown quite, quite firmly, uh, as it, it quite judiciously, uh, is there any, have you put your mind towards 
this video, is there any probative value to this video? Basically telling them this video doesn't have anything relevant in it. And, he's, and he expressed that we're see, we've, we've got a pretty good introduction to Pat King. We see some, some pros and cons to him. And he did like a balancing gesture and maybe not directly at that quote, but at another point, which is he's like, which is some pros and We got a good idea of who Pat King is. Basically, what is the value of this video to the to the charges that were laid? And it's, it's it was like a thirty minute video of Pat King sitting there on the chair, uh, talking about how convoy is organized and the meetings they're having, and, and be peaceful, be lawful, and talking about the 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 code of conduct and uh, following all the highway safety rules, and talking about inchworms in traffic. Basically, if somebody stops, somebody might smack into them, so you need to be on the on the radio more or less. And it just went it went on. And the judge was not pleased with the crown and the crown basically tried to come and say that well my friend the defense uh indicated that they wanted uh, the whole videos played and the defense miss calvino rose to and this is paraphrased and and there's a lot of interpretation in this because my keyboard's very small that i'm writing on so i'm writing with my my hands are quite large and my keyboard's quite small so i'm basically writing like this on my keyboard but 90 percent of it's over here so this cramps up and i miss a lot but i try to get all the really important stuff in on my very tiny chromebook keyboard <laughs> nonetheless uh <laughs> I digress um and in court i'm like this all day my head's down here and i'm like and um, i'm kind of tall very big and my computer's down here i mean i whatever so the the defense says no that's not what i said i didn't tell you to play the whole video basically the defense from my interpretation said we want context we want to show that if there's something being said here like you're going to take a, a a clip of a tidbit here well actually there was 30 minutes before that where there's this that and the other thing but not particularly 30 minutes before that that for something said here and clipped here over here in the distance before that or after that, there's another piece of context that ties into that statement that kind of balances things out. And that's what the Crown, but the Crown was more or less just playing videos and the judge more or less said, stop wasting our time. Um, not in so many words and maybe not in so many interpretations, but that's how I kind of took it. He said, what have you put your mind to what probative value this video has? And, and we watched other videos that maybe were more relevant during Convoy. I believe there was one that was taken on Bank Street, according to Off Officer Yaroskovich's testimony, because she later identified it as Bank Street. I think it was the very early in the Convoy. There was some fireworks going on and Pat King was talking about uh, about things. And, and then there was another video I'm trying to remember about what is restricted to being reported because everything kind of blurs together. So if I mention something, I want to make sure that it's in the appropriate category of discussion. So there was another video. I think this, yes, yeah, so we could talk about this. This is from the 18th of February, remember that, where Pat, it's a short video, eight minutes long, I believe it was, and uh, the Crown wanted this played for, and it, so so after that speech from the judge, I do believe we took a break to allow the Crown to identify different videos that would actually be important to the charges in the trial. And I think that's when we went on an early lunch and then we came back for a late lunch because the defense miss Natasha Calvino had another matter to attend to, which started late as matters often do and ran a little late. So we started at like say 2.35 instead of 2.30 and we ended, I believe just around 12 o'clock. We also ended early at four o'clock in general, I believe with a five minute bathroom break between the late start and the early finish in the afternoon. But more or less, uh, the Crown uh, and the defense basically came to an agreement that they're going to say, the Crown said after that speech and coming back from lunch, I believe that, okay, we're going to take your suggestion, Your Honor, and, and the defense and the Crown are going to consent to agree that some transcripts are admissible, uh, and instead of watching hours of videos, we'll, uh, we'll admit the transcripts and that'll solve the problem. The judge also said earlier in the trial that they're going to read all of the transcripts for all the videos no matter what. And they said that they're a very, your honor, uh, his honor said that he's a very good and quick reader. And I have no reason to disbelieve him in that. So uh, that's, that's how that's moving forward. So back to this video, this eight minute video from the 18th, Pat King is listening to a police scanner in a room somewhere and talking about the police operation that's developing. And it's interesting because, you know, you hear some of the police, ra and then he talks a little bit about the tow trucks. He says, we know where you guys are coming from, Cochrane and Toronto, I think. He's like, we're going to figure out who you are. You're going to ruin your company. And then at one point he says, if there's any trucks at Coventry uh, with a trailer, go jackknife on, on Riverside where all the tow trucks are waiting, block it. I, I, if there was anything in the entire day, I think that was probably the worst thing. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to assign a particular value of it. I don't know what the judge is going to interpret from that. It's a judge alone trial. The judge determines the guilt and will also determine the sentencing. Obviously, guilty or not guilty, the judge will determine. 
So I don't know what value the judge is going to place on that content, uh, comment in that video where King, King says, uh, you know, if you have a truck, take your truck and jackknife Riverside because that's where all the tow trucks are waiting, more or less paraphrased again. Um, I personally believe that was the worst thing that was said today in relations to the charges and the evidence the Crown presented. All, there was other videos where Patrick King is going on the street, uh, talking to people. People are coming up to him, uh, hugging him, saying they respect him. And, and I believe the Crown is presenting those videos as a way of showing that Pat King had influence over the crowd and, and important in, in establishing him as a controlling figure and therefore his, his culpability and guilt in their in their plan that he was counseling people that he had a lot of influence that he could have made things go differently whatever theory the crown is trying to prove that's what i believe those kind of videos go forward uh, towards when people are coming to the street saying that they came to ottawa to see him uh that's why i think the crown is presenting those kind of videos not just to show that pat king's a popular guy and everybody on the street likes him it's to show and, and build that crown theory i believe but Going back to that eight minute video, there was other things said too. He's saying, oh, I tried to get down there. I can't get down there. He said, we have a right to freedom of expression to, to protest legally. He was also saying something that might go towards the Crown's theory of counseling mischief, where he was telling people to, to basically the four wheelers, like he likes to use the trucking terms. If the four wheelers go down there, park your car, pay for your parking legally and go down to the protest area on the February 18th while the police action is in, is in motion. Obviously he's even listening to police scanner. He's talking about the police uh, swarming different areas. He, he had talked in the video about Nicholas having a large swarm of police and he said, well, I just talked to the OPS and my lawyer at different points in the video and it's all good. They're not coming for me. I can go down there and protest. But at one another point in that video, he also said, people go park your cars, pay for your legal parking and go down there and uh it's uh, and uh, go on foot and just tell them you can uber and you can taxi tell them that you're going to your hotel or to work so uh, that goes to the crown's uh different theories as well and uh, i'm sure uh, but again it's difficult to, to see what if any value the judge assigns to those things because it's not up to the crown to determine guilt they present their case and evidence and then the judge makes a ruling that's how justice works and the defense has a counter theory and will present prevent present their other evidence and and their own theory as to what everything means where they think they need to do that or how much they need to think to do that and so on so yeah he was telling people get in taxis go downtown tell them you you work there or you're going to your hotel he was telling people who had hotels in that same video uh to let people have your hotel confirmation number so they could basically say that they had a hotel to go to and it would have a paper trail of that and then he said once you go on parliament hill you have a constitutional right to protest you could go there and be there and you know what as a side as an aside comment to this i absolutely agree you have a, a right to protest on foot and certainly to go to parliament but not during the the emergency measures act in the, the red zone i remember specifically during the poec the public order emergency commission when justice rollo was very interested in if police had actually designated an area outside of the so-called red zone for people to go and protest at so uh, i don't remember if they had said anything about that i know people ended up going near the war museum right off booth street and the former sir john a mcdonald parkway or the just the river parkway i know it has a new name now but yeah, so that's an important part of that. And then, and Pat, in most of his videos, talks about freedom of expression, freedom to peaceful assembly. And then, of course, we had the discussion in another video about uh, a video of the defense. Uh, I can't go into that. So there was some reporting restrictions, and I'm going to follow them very closely. And if I ever step out of line, just let me know. Send me a message, whoever the parties involved are, and I'll, I'll try to amend it as quickly and as uh, amicably and as accurately to your wishes as possible. I don't want to step on any toes here. I'm just trying uh, to let people know what's going on in there and get the, get this story out and, 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 and let it go, go through. But make no mistake that I support freedom, genuine freedom, that I support protesting, exercising our rights. And I think our country was in a dire situation in January 2022 and February 2022, and that the Freedom Convoy changed the course of our country and of the world. And that's my position. So I, I try to maintain my coverage from a more neutral perspective in general, especially my uh, typing and, and uh, transcribing. But uh, personally, I do feel that it was an entirely justified action, an entirely justified and necessary protest that was extraordinarily peaceful given the scale and the anger that a lot of people had genuinely developed at that point. This is completely... All these comments are completely uh, um, not in perspective of Pat King. This is my personal observation. I'm talking in general here. People were angry at that point because for two years they were treated like second-class citizens. They were treated uh, very poorly by family, by businesses, by employers. I personally uh, experienced some of that. So 
I know for a fact that it happened and what happened because I lived through it. And my circumstantial opinions are shared by many other people. People. So we continued watching different videos. I know I'm probably missing a few important moments in the videos, but I want to keep the, the video length a little short. I know it's a Victoria Day weekend. We want to get down and, and have a good time and let loose a little bit and, and relax. So I'm going to let you get to that. The other really important thing I think happened at the end. Uh, of the day when the the judge asked a question uh, I can't remember I think it was of the witness so yes uh, at one point there was some loud video uh, I guess there was some horn honking because Pat King was giving a speech on the stage shout out to Beth and Nodwell she's always the MC in most of these videos on the stage during convoy at Metcalf and uh, and Wellington right in front of parliament where the boom truck was with the flag the state the stage truck Right, right in front of, right outside the parliament, uh, right beside the prime minister's office, and they were really upset about the wrecking ball on the the boom truck, which was a tiny counterweight for his uh, flatbed truck with a boom arm on it to hold the flag on. So, yeah, the wrecking ball. I remember that from the PMO. They said that the truck outside had a wrecking ball, and it's literally just a counterweight. These people aren't serious. They're not honest, and we need to criticize them at every possible opportunity. I digress. So this video. Uh, it was loud and you could hear the horns honking in the celebration of what Pat was saying and then I guess that at one point the Crown remarked that they, were, they could turn the video down and the judge basically said thank you very much and, and then later at the end of the video the judge asked the witness, Miss uh, Officer Yaroskovich, if that was the volume that it was recorded at as it was at during the event and she basically said I didn't edit it, the volume is as it was and he said okay so we could take that to be that that's the volume of the trucks at the time and, and so I think that was there. I don't know if that's 100% accurate because when a truck's admitting something then it's captured by a recording device and then played on a video somewhere else. I don't know if that's translating 100% either too loud or not loud enough, whatever, but uh, it seemed that the, the judge was was of the mind that that's the volume of the trucks at the time, the horn honking that was that uh, that the Crown said to turn down a little bit, so I don't know how that's going to play, if at all, but something worth noting. There was also the discussion that the Crown is quite confident by the end of next week, so right now we're Friday, next week's going to be a four-day week, the Crown says that even if we proceed at a slow pace, they are confident they can rest, they can finish, the Crown can finish their case by the end of next week, and that perhaps the defense, Miss Calvino, could start uh, Thursday and Friday, and then uh, Miss Calvino made a comment, the defense made a comment that they... You know, that the Crown had intended to call certain witnesses and now changed the witness order around, not calling certain witnesses that they were going to call. I remember hearing the name Paul Jorgensen. I don't think they have called him yet. I don't know if they intend to call him. Uh, I, I, I assume they might not be calling him. Who knows? Uh, but Ms. Calvino made the comment that, you know, there, there was an anticipated list of witnesses. And she's not accusing the Crown of doing anything un, unbecoming, but it's changed now. So uh, she had prepared one way. And maybe now she wants to call some of those Crown witnesses who were going to come. And she has to call her own witnesses and also maybe she wants the crown to make a bit of concessions like she did regarding certain video transcripts that she wants introduced so the court doesn't have to sit through video hours and hours of video and instead can accept the transcript in lieu of the videos as well as the videos and the transcripts can be accepted so there could be sort of a concession in that way from the two parties as she did with the crown's evidence which the crown said saved us like seven to eight hours at least of court time which ultimately saved pat a lot of money in defense time so uh, and the judge also remarked that it's really important that by the end of the third week, which will be a week by its own in July, that we finish the entire case, including closing arguments. So it seems that things are running pretty good on track. And that's pretty much it for today. If you want more of the fine details, go look on my Twitter as always. I'll see you next time from Ottawa. I'm right blend. Have yourself a fantastic Victoria Day weekend. And if you decide to lend me a couple bucks, uh, give me a couple bucks. I really appreciate it. It helps pay for the parking and uh, keeps me fueled up to cover this stuff. So take care.